Hello, podcast fans. This is the Brendan Brown's Collections of Facts and Theories podcast show. And today I will be discussing Clay Thompson's injuries and somewhat the future of the Warriors. And also I'll be discussing some theories about Injustice 3 and how I really want it so badly. And um, if I have any more, you'll hear some more in the segment, some different, you know, subjects. But that's my main two topics on this episode is Clay Thompson's injury and Injustice 3. All right, guys, I hope you all enjoy this next segment. And according to Woj, Clay Thompson suffered a right leg injury working out in Southern California today and will undergo tests. The severity of the injury is not known. Thompson had been making his way back from an ACL tear in his left leg that he suffered in the 2019 finals and cost him all of last season. Let's bring in Adrian Wojnarowski with much more on this story. What more can you tell us, Woj, about this injury? Uh, Kevin, Clay Thompson was working out in Southern California today when, when he suffered what was described to me as a a lower right leg injury uh, and he's going to undergo tests here the next few days I'm told it is immediately unclear the severity of the issue of the injury now he it was his left ACL that he missed all of the 2019 and 2020 season the injury he had suffered uh, in the in the previous NBA finals Uh, But right now, they're still waiting to get a sense of how serious this injury might be, Kevin. Well, it's the big story. Of course, the Timberwolves are on the clock in a draft that is really unknown in the top three. The Warriors pick number two. How could this injury impact what the Warriors do tonight? I think it's too too early to tell, Kevin. They don't know what they have, certainly with this injury with uh, Clay Thompson. But certainly understand when you're drafting a a teenager at the top of the draft, it's it's a long view. Uh, not based off a, uh, an injury uh, in the short term, but listen, if uh, they're very serious about Lamelo Ball at two, if he's there, James Weissman, uh, they were still working through those, uh, working through those today. So uh, remains to be seen uh, how it's going to impact them tonight in the draft. Okay, Woj from the draft room as we get ready for the NBA virtual draft right here on the campus at ESPN. Let's hey. go to Sage. Again, Woj uh, keeping track of breaking news from all different angles here with us on SportsCenter. Uh, he's standing by if need be. Also standing by now live is our Stephen A. Smith. And Stephen A., less than an hour ago, you and I were here on SportsCenter talking about what the Warriors should do with that number two overall pick. We're talking about the big man, James Wiseman, and how great of a fit he'd be with a healthy Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Draymond Green. As Woj said, you heard him. We don't know that much right now, but your first reaction when you hear an injury to a leg of Clay Thompson... What do you say? This is nightmarish. Yeah. This is nightmarish. All championship hopes are out the window. You need both. You can't have Clay without Steph. You can't have Steph without Clay and talk championship. You can talk playoffs. You can talk excitement. You can talk box office appeal. But you can't talk championship having one without the other. You need both of them. This is the greatest shooting backcourt we have ever seen in the history of basketball. Do you know that Klay Thompson has never shot less than 40% from three-point range in his career? Ever! That's who we're talking about here. We constantly talk about the two-time MVP, that is Steph Curry. We constantly recognize him because he can shoot off the dribble, not just standing still with a setup shot. It's off the dribble. He can, he can create his own shot better than Klay Thompson. We constantly call him the greatest shooter ever. Let's understand something. His backcourt makes Klay Thompson. It's one of the top five shooters in the history of basketball. I don't care what said. Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, Allen Houston, downtown Freddie Brown from the Seattle Supersonics in the 70s, for crying out loud. Ricky Pierce, Dale Ellis, Dell Curry. I don't give a damn what shooter you find. Clay Thompson is one of the top five shooters in the history of basketball. And for this man to keep coming off an ACL injury on his left leg, to now maybe have injured his right leg, Oh, it, it, oh, I, oh, I know. I, I, I'm very worried. I'm hoping I hope, but I'm very worried because I'm a fan of watching these brothers play, and I don't want to see either of them hurt. I don't want to see either of them gone, and I'm very worried right now. Period. Absolutely. That's why you use the word nightmarish. And of course, even if you're not a Warriors fan, just the watching the product that they've produced for so many years there together, that says it all. We do need to continue to point out. Yes, it was that left leg on which he tore that ACL in the finals in 2019. I forget what year it is, 2019. 
The injury that yes. we're reporting now, that Woj is reporting, is lower right leg. Either way, it doesn't sound like great news. It's still a leg injury. You, it's still a leg injury. And then you wonder, because potential overcompensation as you're trying to heal that ACL. In the meantime, the Warriors have to listen, focus on listen. that. They still have it's to focus dice. on the draft, too, right, Stephen A? They have business to do at number two tonight, but obviously no, no, this is my back no, on the Ryan. No, no, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything with the draft, Jay, uh, Sage. You still take James Wiseman. You yeah. still take the seven-footer who's an athlete, an athlete who can rebound, who can run the floor, who's a presence at the basket to pair with Draymond Hill because you got Andrew Wiggins. And because you still have Wiggins, who Joe Lacob, the owner, the CEO for the Golden State Warriors, came on first take, told me this morning he's still high on. I don't know why, considering the inconsistency of Wiggins, but that's neither here nor there. I'll be nice tonight. We'll talk about that another day. Bottom line, if any Anything happens to Clay, you still need another guard or a guard slash small forward to put in the backcourt that can guard some threes as well as some twos to play alongside Steph Curry. They'd be a playoff team. They'd be they'd make some noise. We have no questions about that. But in terms of championship, because before this past season, five straight years they went to the finals. Yep. In terms of championship, there is no championship without Clay. There is no championship without Steph. You need both. Or no championship. It's just that simple. So what you just heard was that two nights ago, which was my birthday, November 18th, they drafted James Wiseman as their center to place in their starting five. And all of us Warriors fans, including me, were just, you know, and NBA fans were just talking about what Thompson was going to do, what Thompson was going to do. And what you know, coming back with Curry and everything. Then when I heard the tragic news, I was so upset. I said, I hope he don't tear his ACL. And then eventually, later on that night, he well, not later on, but yesterday, excuse me, he teared his ACL. And I'm just, you know, very upset, very frustrated because now my team has to take a break a whole nother year, and we might can't even get to the finals. We might get to the playoffs, but we we will get to the playoffs. I would recommend you that. We might squeeze in like how Stephen A. Smith says, but we might can't get to the finals or we can't just get there at all. But it's great that we did draft James Wiseman instead of drafting LaMelo Ball because LaMelo Ball is a shooter. We don't need enough shooters. We got enough shooters, which is Thompson and Curry and maybe Eric Pasco from shooting from the two and Jordan Poole shooting from the three with Damon Lee and Kai Bowman, which are not... You know, three-point shooters, I can shoot like crazy, but they're three-point shooters. And Eric Pascal's a two-pointer. He can get more to the dunking like Andrew Wiggins as well. But, um, yeah, it's very upsetting that Klay Thompson has injured his ACL. And like how everyone says, we need to pray for Klay. And also, just please listen to this next part right here. Damn. I just heard the news. Clay Thompson's out for the year. Achilles tear. This time in his left knee, in his left leg instead of his, I'm sorry, this time in his right instead of his left. I don't even know what to say. Devastating loss. My heart goes out to him. Good guy. One of the greatest shooters this game has ever seen. Bad for him. Bad for the league. Bad for us not to see him out there. It's a damn shame. Damn! I thought I was going to see the Warriors in the conference finals at the very least. Damn. And as you heard, that was Stephen A. Smith. His reaction, well, the video before that was his reaction to the lower leg injury on his right leg. And now this is his reaction of when he discovered that it was the ACL tear again. So, yeah, 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 yeah. The Warriors are not what we used to be now. And I don't believe our days are over, but I just believe our days are counted. And we just got to make sure we got to put our A game the 2021 the 22 season the next season but moving on let's just talk about this James Wiseman kid so this James Wiseman kid we knew about he played for Memphis as a center he's a lefty like me a left-hander <laughs> and um he's great at shooting and he's great at dunking I'm not I wasn't really you know studying him a lot but I heard a lot about this guy and how he was great I watched him play a game one time before on um YouTube like a mini 
like, like maybe like a, the beginning part, and that was it. And I noticed how he's playing. He plays good, and I enjoy the way how he plays basketball. But um, I believe he'll be a good fit for the Warriors and a good starting five center because we're looking for a dominant center, and he might be our dominant center versus Marquise Chris, you know, and also having Kevon Looney, which are not dominant centers but are good defensive assets. But this is great because now everyone's saying Draymond Green might can train him up in the right way of becoming a defensive bomb. And also, again, he can shoot, but he, he may can't shoot like Curry, but he can shoot. But, yeah, the Warriors' future is not maybe bright now, but guess what, Warriors fans? I'm a Warriors fan myself, and I believe we will come back very, very soon. We don't know when, we don't know how, but we will win another championship before Curry and Thompson retires. I'm going to bet you that right now. If I was a betting man, I would bet you guys and gals that right now. But let's move on to the next segment because I have a special surprise that y'all will be shocked to hear. So if you watched the news last night, NBA, you know, stations like ESPN, First Take, those things, or even looked on Google, um, you probably heard that they were thinking of trading some picks or maybe I think a little bit of assets for Kelly Oubre Jr. And, you know, last night it was confirmed when I looked at and researched that they actually traded him and got him to the Warriors through via trade. So now we have Kelly Oubre, who I don't I believe I never really study him that much. Now don't think this the hundred percent guaranteed of what I'm saying, but I believe they say he's a good um guy on the offensive floor and he can really dunk and shoot and everything. But he's not a good replacement for Thompson, but he's our only, you know, use of having a shooting guard position because we need that good starting five. So we'll have our point guard as Steph Curry, our shooting guard as Kelly Oubre Jr., our small forward as Andrew Wiggins, our power forward as Draymond Green, and our center potentially being James Wiseman if they let that rookie, you know, be a potential center of our starting five. So, yeah, guys, that was a special surprise. So, again, Warriors fans, including me as a Warriors fan, please, guys, please, gals, please, everyone, please don't be worried because we're going to come back. We're going to come back. Don't worry. As long as we be patient because we don't know how God can heal him. Because guess what? With this healing and injury, people like to say it's career-ending or such and such. But we don't know what God has in store for Clay Thompson. We don't know what God can have. God might allow him to have these injuries for a reason so that he can rest. Because he already been in the finals five straight times, if you guys realize that. From 2015 to 2019, we've been in the finals five straight times. Imagine that. My team earned it. We earned all them championships. Knowing we lost two out of those three, five um, rematches in the finals. And then, you know, we won three. But don't feel bad about it. We still won championships. And guess what? Curry and them are retiring no time soon. And you forgot Steph Curry is a is like one of the greatest shooters, like how Stephen A. Smith say, and in my opinion as well, the top number one greatest shooter of all time, him and Thompson. The top best two shooters. In my opinion, the top three is number one, Stephen Curry. Number two, Clay Thompson. Number three, Damian Lillard. So don't worry, but Warriors fans. Don't worry, NBA fans, because guess what? We're going to kick y'all's butt, too, and kick all your teams as well when us Warriors dominate y'all in 2022 if we can't get 2021 championship without Thompson. Now, I don't know. Maybe God might can turn around and just allow us to win 2021 championship without Thompson. We don't know what can go on. We do not know. But all I can say is, is that I'm excited to see Steph Curry come back. I'm excited that the Warriors finally got a good setup for their team because their team looked like they're more of a better playoff team than last year. That's all I have to say. And let's move on to the next a part of this, the next half of this podcast episode. And joining us now for more on this is orthopedic surgeon Dr. John Belzer with California Pacific Orthopedics. Uh, Doc, I was going to say it's great to see you again, but if you're joining us, it probably means something terrible has happened once again, and and here we are. Yeah, you know, Larry, it it seems like just a moment ago that you and I were having that uh, chat uh, over Clay's injury on that fateful day or that fateful week that we had with Kevin as well a year and a half ago, and this certainly... As, as a big blow to the organization, I think all of us as fans were looking forward to a, a really great year with you know one of our superstars and Clay coming back full speed. 
and this uh, certainly is is going to impact his his the season clearly and and you know potentially for future years. But yeah, it's a devastating blow. Yeah, so let's let's start with the basics. What exactly causes a torn Achilles tendon? Well, we went over this before, and I'll do it again. I have my model here, and, and what, I, what I can show you here is here's the, the foot and ankle. Here's the heel bone here, and here, obviously, are your toes and your tibia. And the Achilles sits right here. And so when somebody's jumping, they're pulling up on their Achilles, their foot goes down, and that's how they're jumping up in the air. What happened with clay is when a player goes backwards and then explodes forward, and we saw this, if you ever watch the videos on Kevin's injury, is that as the foot is being forced this way from from the force of the acceleration at the same time the Achilles is pulling, the tendon pulls in op opposite directions and it ruptures. So here's a, a graphic. I don't know how well you can see that, but you can see the Achilles tendon right in this area here. And as the heel goes down this way, muscle pulls up and it basically just like pulling a piece of paper apart, it snaps. And of course, with these athletes, they have such powerful muscles and they're exploding uh, with such force forward that uh, you know, oftentimes the Achilles just doesn't stand a chance. So how difficult is it to repair and normal recovery time? So from a surgical standpoint, it's a very straightforward procedure. There's a number of ways to do it. Generally, we do it open to get the best and strongest repair. Um, surgery is, is less than an hour. And, um, and then the recovery is essentially crutches for a period of time to allow that tendon to heal. But then it's really about the recovery. And, and that recovery means to regain that tensile strength across that tendon so that the tendon can once again, take those loads that these basketball players are placing across it. So that's going to be, as we saw with Kevin and other players who've torn their Achilles, at least a, a nine-month recovery, if not longer. Now, Clay was coming back from a torn ACL in his left knee, the other knee. This injury is to his right Achilles. Do you see this a lot? And I know some of this is speculation here, but where the body is compensating from one injury and maybe you put the strain elsewhere? Yeah, I think that realistically speaking, this is the same issue that we that the question came up with Kevin about whether this the injury that he had was because of the prior injury. And the answer is it's probably more related just to the nature of the sport and, uh, and the amount of stress that they're putting on their joints. All right. Assuming that the surgery goes well, would you expect to see the Clay Thompson that we're used to seeing, the guy who could score 37 points in a quarter, or is the likelihood, given his age and uh, the, the two injuries, will they limit him, or will he, will he be the same splash brother that everybody has, has come to watch and love? Well, in taking care of these, these um, athletes for a while, you know, these guys are competitors, and they work harder than anybody you, you've ever seen. I think Clay will get back to a level that will allow him to participate at, uh, an ex at an elite level like he has for many years. I expect great things out of Clay for a few more years before he hangs up his, his uh, shoes. All right. Uh, Warriors fans definitely want to hear that. Dr. Belzer, once again, uh, thanks for your time this afternoon. Thank you, Larry. So what you just heard was an interview with that doctor and uh, interview guy talking about Clay Thompson's injury and how an ACL, or a, an Achilles, I should say, tear apart. I researched on Google, they were saying that ACL is like the new nickname for Achilles. So really, if I said ACL earlier on this episode, forgive me, it's actually called Achilles. But I really just don't care what it's called. As long as it's ACL or Achilles, it's the same thing mostly. It's basically the same thing, I guess, Achilles and ACLs. But, you know, it's just very upsetting that he has, you know, broken that ACL. And hearing, you know, the in-depths of how it breaks and everything. Oh, man. Oh, boy, man. But, yeah, guys, we'll come back, though. We'll come back. I believe Thompson will be all right because we don't know what God can do. He might can allow Thompson to bring back his energy and become the same player he was last time. So, yeah, guys, that's all I had to say on this episode, and um, let's move on to my conclusion.